Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Muppet. Welcome back to our second video on Shapes 2. <laughs> so, this one is again about the MAM. We have expanded the MAM since the video I did this morning, and it is now capable of doing four layers with colors. It is still not capable of doing pins or crystals, um, but we don't really need it to. This You can see this shape that I'm currently doing is three layers. Some of it is colored, some of it isn't. And that is the shape that is currently being dumped en masse into the void, this little shape right here. Uh, and we have completed it. I'm not actually going to claim that yet. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the process from start to finish, show it off, and then we're going to claim it and we're going to see the machine switch over automatically. <clears throat> now, if you have watched the video I uploaded about 12, 16 hours ago, then I apologize in advance because I am going to be covering the entire MAM in this video. This isn't an update. This is a from start to finish video. And that autosave. Uh, autosave uh, one hour. Let's set that to one hour for now, just for this video. Uh, the reason I'm going to cover it from start to finish is not because, um, well, it's, I, it's, I don't, kind of don't want to direct people to another video to say, watch this one first and then this one. And also, I was coughing my guts out in the last video, so I'd prefer people to just watch this video and get everything. <clears throat> now, I may cough a little bit, but I'm not going to be coughing as much as the other video, hopefully. So as you can see, this one's already run out. Um, this station over here delivers a single carriage with three uh, cargo sections. So it's about 3,000 at a time <coughs> that gets sent in here, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, sent in in 12 belts. We only currently produce four belts at peak from the MAM. So yeah, 12 belts, definitely not going to last forever. <coughs> And now that I've said I'm not going to cough in this one, I can't stop coughing. Anyway, hopefully when I start talking, it'll happen less. So we're going to go through it from start to finish. And this will be the only video you need to know to create a four level MAM that can do any color in any configuration. Pins, crystals, not included. Um, but yeah. So from the start, you have your global wire receiver. It re uh, gets random operator shape number zero. So that is this guy right here, random operator shape number zero. Put it out, put it in a display, there it is. These are unstackers, so we unstack them bit by bit. So the top one, then the second one, then the third one, then the fourth one. There is no fourth one. And so the way we unstack it, the top, there always is a top level, even if it's only three levels tall, there always is a top level and then you either don't have a bottom level or you do have a bottom level if it's four tall. So what we do is we put those into transmitters. We use red, green, blue, and then cyan. Um, and we also have these funky little things down here, which I'll just show off really quickly and we'll get into those later. So this is taking the top two levels, uh, red and green, and then stacking them into magenta into purple now it's also got this other funky loop which i'll explain in just a second so for here we've got stack number three and stack number four now stack number four is empty and the virtual stacker doesn't actually work if one of the entries is null it just doesn't output anything so what we have to do is we have to have this other signal that comes around and says okay if the other one is null if the bottom one is null, then all we need to do is uh, basically uh, take the original signal, send that through, and if it's null, then we just send that one straight through. So that way we always end up with something. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So that one is yellow. So yellow is the bottom half. Purple is the top half. And yeah, there we go. So those are just uh, global transmitters that we've set up. So red, green, blue, cyan, and then purple is red and green, and yellow is blue and cyan. 
So now that we've got the basics out of the way, let's go over, so that's the hub, let's go all the way over there and take a nice global look at our MAM. So this is the actual processing and then we've got all the um, inputs coming in here. So I'll start off with something simple. This is our kind of hook diamond thing. So we've just got three belts coming in, three full belts, and that's enough to keep our throughput going because because of the way we cut these, uh, what do we do? We use the, the smart cutter, this guy, the one that doesn't throw anything away, which means these shapes definitely go a long way. So we don't need that much going in. And we've got four trains. Each train corresponds to a different layer. So the bottom, second, third, and then top, depending on how you look at it. This one's actually the top, and then the second, and then the third, and then the bottom. But this only gets done on a four layer one. So if there's a three layer, it's top, middle, bottom. If it's a one layer, then this is the layer. Kind of a bit weird, kind of feels a bit weird, but anyway. Those are the four trains that we need for the different levels. Now, if we go over to our color, this, we st I start to go a little bit nuts with the colors. And the reason for that is the way that colors work. So I'll just go over to a thing here and just show you. So the cutting, there's no waste. For painting, on the other hand, there is a lot of waste because it takes the same amount of paint to paint a single quarter as it does to paint an entire, an entire four, an entire shape, which is consists of four quarters. So there's no savings when you paint an individual quarter, but given the way these shapes are, the way they sort of mess around with, the, like, let's say we split this up. What you'd really wanna do for this bottom one is to join these three, paint, and then join the fourth. That's too complicated. That's incredibly complicated. So you have to paint these three individually. <clears throat> and that's the easiest and simplest way to do it. But that means you need three times as much paint. So we need a ton, a ton of paint incoming. So what I've done here is I've got this basic little setup. It takes three green, three red, and three blue. And it just combines them. To get a full four, uh, four pipes coming out, you need eight of these guys and you need two blue and two red for each of those because of the way these mixes work you only need 60 and 60 to create 120 so these guys are incredibly efficient um and then we do a similar thing for white and yellow over here i'm not going to go too much into the details of these but we will go into fluids a little bit later because it's some very interesting things and my actual color um painter but as you can see we're sending them in on all three different levels, so we only need three output belts instead of seven output belts, which is really nice. And I've actually got three of these little panels, one, two, three, and then some belt madness to get everything up to this station. So as you can see, we've got the triple stack belt coming in here, and we split it out in various ways to get all three of the reds over here, all three of the blues over there, all three of the greens over there. Same with the mixed colors, and then white just has an entire platform to itself. And the train that goes out is one carriage per color, triple stacked. And yeah, because we definitely need a lot of throughput because of what I mentioned before. And again, we've got the four different trains, one for each layer. Each one is super stacked. Um, most of the time, like with this particular shape, the top two layers don't use colors at all. It's just the bottom one uses the colors. So uh, if we had an entire shape, which is like all 12 quadrants or all 16 quadrants used blue or something like that, this setup would fall over. There is three, repeat, three of these coming in. That means at optimum efficiency, it can color in three quadrants over the entire shape. Over the entire shape. Uh, now, we could just duplicate this entire setup and then we'd have six. We could duplicate it again and again and again um, and we'd get more throughput um, from the input side. We don't really need to at the moment, but maybe later on I will have to. So we'll see how that goes anyway. Now, let's get up to the actual, the actual MAM. So as you can see here, 
one per layer. Each one of these is a layer. So let's go off here and let's look at the very basics. So the train, the color train, sends it directly onto a belt, all three layers onto the belt. This guy doesn't quite do that. It actually shoves them all down onto one layer right at the start. We don't really need three layers coming into the station. This is basically just to make, to make sure it never runs out, but it's kind of unnecessary, but yeah. We just shove it in and then we have, never have to worry about running out. And then we're sending in with a single, a single four belts going in, which again, because of the way we cut it up, there's no wastage. So because we're getting four, I, I should mention the MAM has four belts of output. That's what it's designed to do, four belts. So we're sending four belts in, and if the entire layer is a circle, they'll get cut up with no waste and then merged together with no waste. So four belts in, four belts out, this is exactly what we need. Uh, and then again, we have all four shapes over here. There are only four shapes in the entire game. So that's all you need. We pass in the full shape each time. We don't uh, pass in anything funky. It's the full shape going in each time. So now let's go on to the processing. Let's go through it fairly, uh, fairly simply. So this is the red guy. Um, so we look at this shape. Uh, this is the top. So we're looking at the top layer. So the red thing is the top layer, which is an inside curvy and a circle. So the bottom is always the top right. So that's this guy. So we don't, so we just, this pulls out the top right. There it is, there's the color. So if we scroll up to here, we can see we're rotating it three times to get this circle a bit on the top right. And then we get a circle and we get gray. If we go up to the next one, it's blank because there's nothing at that top right. There are no, this is the only virtual um, rotator you have. There's no other virtual rotator. So we just have to deal with this one. Okay, so we've got this uh, color, which we send off to the color section. And then we've got the actual shape, which we send off to a few different places. So first things first, the shape goes through these areas. And we can see over here, we're matching it against this hard coded bit. It's always gonna be in the top right at this one. So we match it against there and then we knot it and we knot it because this always branches off if it's false. So we see we branch it off to the left uh, in all four places and then it sends it up to this top line which sends it across. All of these things are completely tileable. So this one's gonna send it north to another section which does exactly the same thing for the next quadrant. And then it sends it left onto this tileable thing which just keeps sending it across. And none of the other ones are going to send it up so there's no clash. Um, next thing we have here, this is just a dumper. <clears throat> oh, bloody earth, I'm coughing. So all this does is it sets this up for, rotates it a bunch, stacks it a bunch to produce the full shape. And then we use this shape on these to dump these out when we don't need them. So the instant the shape changes, all this crap in this top belt will be dumped out really quickly because you don't want to have to send it through the cutters and then dump it afterwards because that'll take forever. So it's better to dump it beforehand. This is doing the same thing here. This is just a dumper. And as we mentioned before, this is the cutters, uh, cuts it beautifully and then cuts it again and then rotates it beautifully. So this one is, this platform is customized to cut it, to put it on the top right. So it matches this one. Um, and again, we want a full belt coming out we only want a quarter belt coming in, so we don't have to do any sort of crazy amount of cutters, just enough to get a full belt coming in. And yeah, as I mentioned, so these rotators are the, for this one, over here the rotators are set up differently to create something at the bottom right. <clears throat> okay, and all of these platforms are obviously the same going north, just with different shapes, different inputs, different layers. Now, let's talk about the color layout um and what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to move a little bit further north for this so that's the first layer that's the second layer that's the third layer so this is the one with a whole bunch of red so we're going to be checking this one out so let's just i wish i wish we could pin this so this layer 
the top right is gray and then the rest is all red. So as we can see, the top right is gray and then the rest is all red. So the way this works is, uh, if you remember, we pulled the color out here from that um, top right and then we just chain that signal down all the way and every time we send it up here and we compare it against a hard-coded signal. So for this one, or that one's gray, we won't talk about that one yet, but this one's blue, this one's green, this one's red. So we compare it, if it's equal, we knot the signal and then send it down so these guys get split off. Um, every other platform, it doesn't get split off at the one it needs to, it gets split off and then it gets sent down to these colorizers, sent down and then sent up to this level three um, bus, which this goes on towards the end. Now, one thing I definitely want to mention, and if you saw my earlier video, you know I had a lot of problems with fluid throughput. So I've done something a little bit interesting here, because what I realized is these little fluid throwers, they work at a rate of 1800 per minute. But the pipes work at a speed of 7200 per minute. And I didn't realize that until I was making the MAM. So what you do is you have three throwers stacked on top of each other and then you merge them into one pipe. <clears throat> so rather than the pipe having an effective um, speed of 1800, because it's only what one thrower, it actually has a speed of, of 5400 because it's got three throwers. And remember, we're feeding it from three different things, which means we are feeding it from 5400 all the way from the belt. And yeah, when we feed it back in, we split this up into three throwers again, one into three for each pipe. And yeah, so we're keeping a consistent throughput of 5,400 for each layer, for each color. Now, if this was a full four, if it was all four for this uh, layer, then we would start to slow down a bit. But for three, we can keep a 100% throughput going pretty much forever. As long as the input lasts. Our input, our total global input for the MAM is 5400, which is, um, yeah. So if there was four, quad, four red quadrants across the entire shape, then we'd be screwed, but we just create <clears throat> another input. I'm coughing a lot less, but I'm still coughing a little bit anyway. So that is the colorizer. Um, and of course, since we ha don't have a fluid uh, filter, we have to have one of these for each color. And then we just send it through the color that is required. Over here, we've got, is that supposed to be there? Yeah, it is. Over here, we've just got a simple uh, little filter set up to, for gray ones. So over here, it's red, so we don't do anything. Over here, it's gray. So we do, so we send them across. It's not really necessary because um, if it's red, they never actually make it down here, but it's just a nice little dumper to get rid of anything. When, they, when it changes over, at least, it'll get rid of something here. So that is pretty much it. So we've got our shape, we've colorized it. Now we send it through to the stackers. And the stackers are quite interesting. So uh, let me... Let me see, um, yeah. I'll explain this a little bit more. Um, actually, do we have a good example on this shape of how the stacker works? Uh, yeah, not on the red level. The red level is a full one, but down here, we should have a good example. Ignore this, this is from a previous shape. This is just garbage. It's very hard to clean up garbage everywhere. So we can see this particular one if we look, is this middle shape, this square, because we always, we, we staple the two right ones and the two left ones, and then we staple the whole thing together. So in this case, we're stapling the, the square and the thing underneath it, but there's nothing underneath it. So the way this works is we do it based on the color that's sent through. In this case, there's nothing coming down here. So the color that gets sent up from that bottom one is null. So we send it up to the top, we compare it against null, and we say, oh, it's equal. Knot it, and then send, use that to send them off to the side. So these guys basically skip the stacker, 
because if we sent them in the stacker, they just get stuck. So it skips the stacker because the other side is null and then sends it all the way down there. And that is the left side of the shape. It basically gets sent through. Now, if we look at the right side of the shape and we just compare that for a second, um, that is a circle and a pointy. So in this case, both of them have a color. So the color gets sent down, it's not equal to null. So both of them get sent into the middle. So we've got a pointy and we've got a circle. The order doesn't really matter in this particular stacker. So they just get stacked together and then sent off. Now in this case, we're oring both of these signals so we can figure out um, if there's anything at all coming out of this one. Um, which is very, very important because sometimes uh, one whole half is completely empty. And I'll actually go down and show you an example of that because this is what happens for the very top layer. So if we have a look at the very top layer, one half is there and the other half isn't. So in this case, this half is there and it gets split off because the other half is completely empty. There's some leftover garbage, ignore that. Just look at the signal, the signal is completely empty. And in fact, because we did an OR, we OR'd these two empty signals, it actually comes back with zero. So here, instead of comparing null, we have to compare zero because otherwise it wouldn't work. I had to find that out the hard way. So anyway, we're splitting that off and then we're sending it through. And we've got a nice little dumper here. This is, I remember, our red channel. Um, just checks to make sure this is correct. And then we send it up the belt. So that is the end of our very first layer. The second layer, the third layer, and the fourth layer. And then they start to get mixed in interesting ways. So again, we've got a dumper at the start. I've got a dumper at the start and the end of all these long belts, which just helps when things are cleaned up. So yeah, we've got a dumper, sends it across. Again, it checks the opposite side. Um, we just use the green one here and it says, okay, is the green one null? No, send it into the middle to be stacked. Again, is the red one null? No, send it in the middle to be stacked. And there we go. So that's stacking the top layer on top of the second layer, sends it through little dumper and this is remember the magenta one the pink one that we talked about right at the start which is the red plus the green that's where it comes in here and if we go up to the very top we can see layers three and four being added in this case layer three just gets pushed off because layer four cyan is null so we don't need to stack anything so it just gets sent straight across and yellow already did the fancy stuff so it realizes that's all it needs and sends it through. And then we go down to the final stacker, again with a dumper at the end and pretty much the same thing here, yellow and magenta, they both exist, they get sent to the stacker, uh, get stacked up, get sent over to the one of the final dumpers. This is just um, random operator shape number zero. We can just go to the original one check it here, send it through. And this one goes down all the way to the train station through a final dumper and into here. And this is this triple stack train is just a one carriage train. And we send it all the way. Is there actually anything in here? Oh, there actually are shapes in this one. There aren't shapes in many of them because it's 3000 shapes it has to build up and that takes um, it takes a little while. It takes about eight minutes because I think we do 540, so six minutes. It takes about six minutes to fill up a train. So there we shove them out, all three, split them off, send it down, send it across. So it looks very pretty <clears throat> with all 12 belts. And then we're back at the start. We got our yellow, we got our purple, we got the original setup, we got the shapes coming out. Uh, yeah, so that's, as, that's pretty much it for the explanation, and I hope you, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tease you like that, I'm not going to uh, finish the video now, 
We're going to watch these pretty guys go into the center. And then we are going to go back over to our man. <clears throat> and we're going to see what happens when we press complete. So I'll claim this one. Look at that, 0.90% worldwide. I know that's kind of a fake figure, but man, do I feel good about it. All right, we pressed it. Now we have a look at this. Three, la three layers, no pins still. Okay, so immediately this stuff start get starts getting dumped. Everything at every level will start getting dumped. Dumping this, dumping this, dumping every... I still need to put dumpers in between those. I kind of couldn't be bothered. Here we go. The, we want circles now instead of squares, so the squares are all getting dumped. We already dumped the cuttings over there. Now, it will take a while to spin up because there's still a lot of physical distance. If I had fluid filters, I could make this uh, two by two or something like that. Potent maybe, I'm not sure. I'd have a filter, I'm not sure how I'd do it. I'd still have to send all these pipes through with this amount of throughput. So it would still be painful to do it. I'm really not sure actually. Um, but anyway, so we're now sending through the circle. Where is this? So this is the bottom left. It confused me a bit. It's the bottom left of this shape, which is uh, the middle shape. So at the bottom left of the middle shape, which is the right position, so top right, bottom right, bottom left, top left. And this one is empty, you can see, because nothing's there. So we got blue, we got this shape, it's the bottom left, so it's been oriented correctly. We send it through, we send it through, we send it through, we send it through, and here, we are gonna split it off because the color is correct. So this one gets sent down to blue. And yeah, so as you can see, the MAM has worked correctly. Um, we will give it uh, a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> it will actually take quite a few minutes. Probably takes about, I don't know exactly, like 10 to 15 minutes to fully spin up and fully start getting to the stage that we were at last time where you get the the full four belts going for everything. Um, but at least we can get that rate right now. Um, yeah, we're still not hitting three colors per layer or three colors per shape. So we're not gonna run into any throughput problems. But yeah, that still worries me a little bit. I'm glad we fixed it to the level that it is now, but it still does worry me. So here we go. So there's the bottom left. These are the top left. These got here quickly. Is that right? What is this shape supposed to look like? It is. How did those squares get there? So maybe this was a square previously. So there are already squares on the belt. <clears throat> so the squares on the belt got shoved straight into the colorizer and they came out nice and quickly. And we can see some grays left over from the light. Yeah. The greys were left over from the last shape, so they were squares. So that's how the squares got coloured so quickly. Now, these ones will go down there and they will get um, matched with that little circle, uh, which is correct. That little circle is correct. Um, maybe the last shape had a little circle up the top right as well. That would explain why they got here so quickly. But yeah, putting a dumper in the middle there would definitely not be a bad idea. Because, you, well, you do have these little ones off to the left, and they are incorrect. They're supposed to be fully blue. So these ones will get stacked and then thrown out, which is fine. I mean, we could dump them beforehand, but it doesn't really matter too much. These belts have full throughput because of the stackers, of course. Wasting a little bit of these guys, but they have full throughput as well. So, yeah, it's kind of just, at some point, the dumpers are just for neatness. Uh yeah, kind of, kind of. Some cases they hold things up. These stackers are one of the cases where they can hold things up. But anyway, we're just sitting here waiting. Um, at some point, these belts will start to show the correct shapes. It's not showing this one yet. 
but we're starting to get close. That's a bit of a dodgy shape. It's supposed to be three squares, so we've still got some pointy things left over. But here we go. We're starting to see some three squares coming in. This is properly filtered. Yeah, there we go. There's a there's a three square one. That one is correct. So <clears throat> that one will not be purged when it goes through because this one will be setting it correctly. Uh, so yeah, so in terms of concept, this is a fully functional four layer MAM. Uh, I haven't got to a section which requires four layers, but it's all set up. It's all set up and ready to go to do four layers. So when I finally get there, it will work and it will work completely fine. Um, efficiency, eh, it can do four belts at a time. It takes a while to spin up and it does have some restrictions on the amount of colors that can be in the shape, which is, which is fine. Um, I'm still not sure whether pins are going to appear in this shape at all. If they do, then I'm going to have to make some updates. If they don't, then I might just leave this machine and call it good. And then later on, I might start creating a new MAM for this one over here, for the crystals and all that sort of stuff. But for now, we're probably going to call this one phase one. And we're just going to say, okay, this is a phase one, does four layers with colors, doesn't do pins, doesn't do crystals, doesn't need to. I'm pretty sure, it, I, I have a pretty strong feeling that it doesn't need to for this particular randomized shape. Anyway, we can see this one's pretty solid. This one goes on the outside, which is fine. We got these ones coming in, you and you. You're just starting to come in, you, you took your sweet time. Uh, or maybe this belt is just a little bit longer or something, I'm not sure. But anyway, we're progressing fine. Uh, got some, a little bit of garbage, a little bit of garbage, uh, but mostly a good shape. That is mostly a good shape. That is this shape down there. Yeah, that's beautiful. So yeah, I'm just gonna, actually, I'm gonna leave it a little, oh, I thought this one completed for a sec. No, it's something else. 0.85%, that's awesome. While we're waiting for this one to spin up, so I can show you the final shape going through, I'm gonna show you something very interesting that I was playing around with. Because if you watched my previous video, you will notice me talking about pins and I was talking about possible ways to do it. And I think I figured out a possible way to do this. This is very, very hacky. I actually read it off the Shapes 2 wiki, so credit for them for finding it. But yeah, so you take any shape, you cut it in half, you crystallize it so that half fills up with crystal. You cut it so only the crystal section is left and then you pin one side of it. So this is actually a crystal on top of two pins, two crystal sections on top of two pins. You take the pin section and you stack it on top of a non-pin section. I don't know if they need to be on the opposite side. I'm not sure if it matters. What you end up with is this. Because the when you stack a crystal on top of something else, the crystal at the top shatters, I think. I'm not sure if it has to be in the crystal on the bottom or whatever, but this happens. You end up with a crystal and then two pins just by themselves. We get rid of the crystal, we cut it out, we stack, we do a bit of rotation, we stack, and you end up with a shape that is four pins and nothing else. Now... If you are making a MAM, that requires pins. Potentially what you do is you make a nice big factory which produces four full belts of these, uh, which is pretty straightforward, given this algorithm we just looked at. And then basically you add, you add a new line here. You just add a new line here and you send some pins through. Uh, exactly the same way that you would anything else. Now, <clears throat> that doesn't really help you with crystals. I think crystals are the things that make it extremely complicated, but that might work for pins. As far as I'm aware, I've never seen a shape which is space pin, like, like, an, so like empty pin space or anything like that. 
I don't know if that exists. I don't think it does. It might. It might exist. Um, we're getting into the theoretical level here, but I just do not know. So we'll have to think about it for a while. But anyway, that's one option for doing the pins is to send the pins up the end, create the, the basic four dot pin like I just showed you. The other option for doing the pinning is you do the pinning right here. So you set up a little square over here and you would say, okay, this, remember this one is the top. So this is the red, uh, the red receiver. So what you would do is pull out, uh, pull out your next level receiver. So you pull out the green one in your stead and you look at the green one in the same quadrant and you'd say, is it a pin? <clears throat> if it is a pin, then you pin this one right now. And then you would go on to the next one, the blue one. Is that a pin? Pin it again. And you keep going through until you find something that's not a pin. And then this would be pinned twice. The next, the one you're stacking against would be pinned zero times. And you would kind of end up with something which is a little bit higher. But it might work. I think that one might work. Um, I'd have to test that. But to be honest, I'm not really sure. The, I, there's a lot of experimentation to do with pins. And I have a feeling now that pins only come up when you go into here. And then you have to deal with crystals as well. So that's, that's like extremely hard level. Whereas this is just normal level. If this one starts having pins, I sh I'll deal with pins and then I'll be okay. If this one doesn't have pins, then I'm just going to leave this ma'am as it is. I'm probably going to send it through to like level 50 or level 100. I'd love it if they introduce a feature where it starts doing it automatically, where it auto-progresses the, um, the shape once you fulfill it and you can pin it to the screen and see what it is. Yeah, so where were we? So we've pinned these guys. Well, we've stacked these guys. That's that. Sending that through. Send it to the end. Stacking these up sending it through the end. So we've got our shape. So we've basically got our shape. Now we're just sitting here. I can't tell if we already filled up a train or if we're just now starting to fill up the first train. Um, the easiest way to tell is to go all the way back to the start. You haven't got anything. We haven't delivered anything. So yeah. So yeah, so it's probably taken at least 10 minutes for this system to go from pressing the button to actually filling up the station with these symbols. And I mean, let's, let's be honest, look how slow these belts go um, and look at the distance that they have to travel. So in terms of pure distance, we could compact the factory a bit more to increase the throughput, to, incre to decrease the time, but yeah... Um, you could add some trains in these gaps. I'm not sure if that make much of a difference because you still have to wait for the uh, thing to fill up. Yeah, we could we could do some things here. I think this is really killing it. This distance over here over all the colors. So if there were fluid filters, we could make that a little bit easier. Maybe compact. I mean, do a lot of compaction. I mean, this is a three by three stacker. This could be compacted quite a bit. I'm sure there's some uh, extreme players looking at this right now and thinking I could do this in a one by one. Uh, maybe not a one by one, two by two, 100%. I could probably do it in a two by two. But yeah, a three by three is, is very big. But it lines up beautifully with these guys. So that's why I did it. And, that, and then this lines up beautifully with these ones. So yeah. But anyway, that is how it is going. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm actually going to watch this. I'm just going to watch this, and then I'm going to watch it go out. And I'm going to keep recording it, because it's my video, and I can do what I want. And the last video was for a smaller man, and it went for 52 minutes. And this is only 39 minutes, so yeah, we've got to pad it out. I want to make it at least as impressive as the last one. Or, yeah, why did this one take so much less time? I don't know. I think I rambled a bit more about all the problems I was having, but I solved a lot of those problems. That fluid thing really, um, really saved my bacon. The fact that pipes 
can take 7,200, but the ramps can only take 1,800 because I was afraid I'd have to send 12 pipes through that two by one thing, but I only ended up needing to send four, which was all I was sending already. So yeah, that was a very nice save. Very, very, very nice save. Let's actually have a bit of a look because this one, we got blue. We got a lot of blue being used on the second layer. Uh, it's going okay. It's going okay. Um, we got this one. And we got this one. Um, and we got no real problems with the pipe throughput. They're, they're going 100% good. They're not stalling. They're not suffering. So yeah, this, this pipe throughput is definitely working. Um, if we look here, these are not draining that fast. They're definitely draining. And they're definitely draining in an okay pace. Um, but we've got so much stacked up here. And the trains will, at this point, the trains will all have three in there because the trains have plenty of time to get fully stacked. Where's my big green one? There it is, it's going back. So the big green one, yeah, it's got three blues in there. And it's very, very easy for these trains to get fully stacked because 9% of the time you're not even using a colour. So they get stacked quite a lot. Yeah, so let's have a look. Uh, we're almost, almost full on these shapes. So we're going we're gonna to finish the video off where we started by seeing our shape going into the hub. And we still need less than 3,000, so we can still fill this up completely with one train load because each one of these little containers is 1,080. Um, so let's respawn the train. You can click on that, respawns the train. So that's 3,240 um, going on. And we can follow the train as well. A little secret to following the train, if you're getting too ahead of the train, zoom in. If the train's getting too ahead of you, zoom out. And you can follow the train and it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Until it turns, you gotta be very quick when it turns a corner, but yeah. I, I, learned, I learned how to do this because I was constantly chasing trains, trying to see, oh, have you actually got cargo or are you empty? So there we go, quick little switch, zoom in so the train gets a little bit closer. Whoa, there we go. I love doing this. Get a bit more distance on it. This is a very long route. Very, very long. I could have probably built the train a little bit closer, but yeah, this is not this is not an issue with our throughput. This this train going on here. This is not slowing down the throughput at all. Alright. So there it goes out and it dumps him in here. I did think about having a train diving directly into the vortex. Uh, I just didn't do it. I could have done it. I just didn't. Probably would have been cooler if I did it, but I, look, I love seeing the 12 belts. Just the 12 belts all going through, all going in at the same time. These are all the other milestones. One, two, three, four, five, six. The last two have eight belts each and the other ones just have four belts. So that's why my level's so high because I've been keeping these guys going. And as you can see, we've got the shape going in. we got the purple number one. we got this number counting up like crazy. Well, not like crazy yet, but give it a second. There we go. Look at all those guys going in. Now it is counting up a bit more crazy. It's counting up 12, 12 per tick, uh, which is very nice. So yeah, there we go. We are back in the hub. We've got all of our MAM supplied uh, things going through. We're going to wait for this to go through. We're going to complete the thing. Then we're going to let another shape go through. And then, well, we're going to let this one go through, finish it off, watch the uh, system being dumped again and restarted. But we're not going to watch all the way through to the next shape because that would be crazy. Um, but yeah. Just, just gonna, yeah, see how it goes. So there we go. So remember, this train load has 3,000, so we're probably close to, yeah, we're close to emptying it out. And so very soon, we're gonna get to the point where we're gonna need more than one train load to complete 
the uh, complete the process, which is a little bit annoying, but there we go. 2,800, claim, what do we got? Still three high, bunch of yellows right up the top, everything else is gray, so it's really not testing us yet. So we can go all the way over here, see everything's being dumped at the moment, all this stuff being dumped. This stuff is stuck at this point. Um, once a new item comes in, these will start to lower out. It kind of negates it, but I think it negates it at a lot faster rate. So like you chuck in one item, 10 items in there get destroyed or something like that. And yep, dumping this stuff, dumping everything, dump, 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 dump. Again, we go right back to the start. We're dumping all of these crosses and sending the circles through. And we've started again. We've started all the way over again. And what was it? Right at this, right at the first thing, we needed some yellows, I think. Was it? I think I look at the shape. Yeah, the top, the top layer needed yellows. Why am I not seeing yellows? Am I at the right? Oh, I wasn't. I wasn't even at the top level. Here we go, some yellows. So we do have yellows here. Yellow, yellow, yellow. I thought maybe we'd have some. Um, yeah, here we go. So we got some yellow squares. So this guy does not require yellow squares, but we had some squares halfway through the system, and now the yellow squares are going to get stacked. Really, really need a dumper in the middle there. That would be that would be preferable. But yeah, for now, uh, yeah, dumper in between those points, dumper in between those two points. That's that should be my next step. Um, and we got enough space where we can just move all those guys over. I'd, I'll probably do that. That would be a nice. But again, it it kind of impacts our throughput because we can start to waste some shapes because they get wasted being um, stacked with other shapes that we don't care about and producing garbage, which is not great. But yeah, if we were worried about efficiency, like this is 15 minutes for each goal at the moment. So wasting like a minute on getting rid of garbage, a minute or two, it's, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, that has been the four layer MAM. So this is the equivalent of a Shapes 1 MAM. Basically, you can do everything that a Shapes 1 MAM can do. Uh, shapes 2, with the pins and with the crystals, it cannot do. But I might do that one day. I'll have to see. Um, but for now, Shapes 1 MAM, or the basic randomizer MAM, is working, is beautiful, is done. And yeah, oh, look at this. I got this one. I'm now 0.80% worldwide. So anyway, that has been that. We're going to zoom out. We're going to look at all the pretty trains going in, going out. And we're going to leave it right there. This is my entire MAM. I'm sure an expert could do it in a quarter of the space, but it is mine. And I made it, and I am happy with it. And look how much space I'm wasting just by getting these rails. I'm sure I could make this a lot skinnier. Look, look at this terrible setup. I could send the trains in over there and then sort of route the belts around the side and save, like, probably 10 tiles of vertical space. Oh, whatever. Whatever. Um, yeah, anyway, that's the ma'am. Uh, if you've got any questions... Let me know. Um, I will, yeah, I'll see how we go. And yes, oh, by the way, uh, there was a comment on a on my previous video um, dealing with the issue I had where if this suddenly becomes empty, is it become, it hasn't become empty. But if it was, did have something and then it becomes null, the dumpers weren't working correctly. Yes, and uh, I read your suggestion, and your suggestion is probably correct. Let me just have a look. Yeah, I think it was, um, I don't know if I should mention your username on YouTube. Um, Blaza54. Yeah. Um, that's That solution would probably work. So at some point, I might put that in there. But 
doesn't really affect throughput, so I'm not super, super stressed about it. Um, anyway, I think we're pretty much done. I'm tempted to watch this go through again, but look, we're up to almost as long as the other video. I'm just yammering on at this point. So we're going to finish it off and we're going to call it there. So four layer, fully colorized MAM, um, unless it does really crazy floating stuff, then this should work for everything. So thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you guys later.